aliens my name is Avin Bhatti and let's continue with this series on python in this video we'll talk about one of the most interesting concepts at least from my side and the concept name is threads now why do we need threads now first of all what is a thread now basically if you can imagine an application let's say if you have ms word that one application will have certain sub process right so in ms word we can type a content we can change the font of it you know we can save that in some other formats so ms office provide you so many features so we can break down one task into multiple process and then again we can break down those process into a thread so you can imagine thread as a lightweight process. So when you break down the big task into small parts, each part will be called thread. So why do we need threads? To understand this, let's go with the concept of multitasking. So what is multitasking? So let's say if you have a CPU and if you have multiple tasks, let's say you want to type something on MS Word, you want to listen to a music on VLC player, or you want to also browse the internet on Chrome. So if you want to do multiple tasks at the same time, so our system, basically any OS nowadays, any modern OS, let's say Windows or Linux based OS or Mac, it does support multitasking, which means at one point you can run multiple applications. If you have learned OS, we have this concept, right? You cannot actually run multiple tasks at the same time. So as your CPU, it will do time sharing. So every task will get some time. And we know that, right? That's how your system works. We cannot run multiple applications at the same time. But nowadays, we have a concept of multi-core CPUs, right? We don't have one core nowadays. We have multi-core CPU. Example, the machine which I'm using now, this is a quad-core CPU. In fact, the mobile phone which I'm using now, this is octa-core CPU, right? Which means I have multiple cores available to work with. And on this multiple core, we can run multiple applications. But how? Uh, let's think about one application. Let's say MS Word. Now, while you're working on MS Word, at the same time you're typing, at the same time there is a spell check, at the same time maybe uh, you are trying to save the file on the other hand let's say if you're playing a game in game itself we have so many events happening at the same time you know let's say if you are driving a car you're playing nfs at the same time you are driving a car and then we have opponents then we have cops so we have so many things happening at the same time that means we have individual threads so you are one thread your enemy is one thread the cops are one thread and then all these threads are getting executed on different different cores right not on same code maybe on the same code but most of the time it is on different cores so if you have octa core cpu you can use all the eight cores in fact if the software which i'm using for exporting the videos needs a high processing power so what happens is if you have octa core cpu i can actually use all the eight cores of my cpu that's the advantage of using multiple threads now, in fact, if you can just go to your task manager, we have this option of performance and there you can check, you know, how many cores you have. So in this machine, I have four cores and look at the threads now. So in total, we have 1,902 threads. Again, the moment I open one application, it will open more threads. The moment I close the application, it will have less threads. Example, if I open Eclipse, you can see it will have its own threads, right? The moment I open Eclipse, it will increase the number of threads which are required for that. So every application will have multiple threads. Now, how can we understand that in a programming way? So let's try to build our own threads in this code. So let me open my PyCharm. So we have a fresh look here. We don't have anything there. What I do is, let's say if I define multiple functions, okay, just to keep it simple, what I will do is I will get two classes. One is hello. We have a hello class and I don't know why, but when the moment I say multi-threading, this is my favorite example. And then we have hi so we have two classes here we have hello class and we have hi class and in both the classes we have the same code let's say we have a definition so this class has a function called as run or method called as run and in this run method what i do is i want to print hello five times so i will say for i in range i will specify the range as five okay and then i want to print hello five times right so i will say print hello that's it so it will print hello five times the same thing I want in high as well. So I will simply reuse my code instead of saying copy paste, which should say reuse. And here I will say hi. So we got two classes, hello and hi. In hello, we are printing hello five times. We are printing hi five times. Now, if you want to execute these two methods, logically what you do is you create objects of it, right? That's what we should be doing. We can have any name here. We'll say T1 is equal to, again, you can have any object name, doesn't matter. So I'm saying T1 and T1 is the object of hello and T2 is the object of hi, right? Again, you can use any name. You can use obj1, obj2 or whatever you want. As of now, I'm using T1 and T2. So T1 is the object of hello. T2 is object of high. 
Now, once I got the object of hello and hi, I want to call these functions or methods, right? So you will say t1.1, that's how you do it, right? And you will say t2.run. Now, before running this code, just analyze what it will print. Of course, right, it will print five times hello, it will print five times hi. You know, that's the format. Why it will print hello first, then hi? Because that's how you're calling it. So you're first calling t1.1, where t1 is the object of hello. Then you're saying t2.1, then it will call the run method of hi, right? Let's run this code, let's see what happens. So if you can see the output, we got five times hello and we got five times hi, right? This is what we were expecting. So normally what happens is, since you're calling run of hello first, it is printing hello five times, then you're calling run of hi, it is printing hi five times. And that's how the sequence goes, right? It always print hello and hi in that sequence. So let's imagine each run takes some time, okay? Of course, right, to print hello and hi takes some time, right? So let's say uh, to print all hellos, it takes five seconds and to print all highs, it takes five seconds, which means in total, it will take 10 seconds. And we know that it is using only one core. So even if this machine has four core CPU, right, it is still using one core. I want to execute the run of hello and execute the run of hi simultaneously. Is it possible? Can I execute two functions at the same time on different cores? Or maybe on the same code but then simultaneously, is it possible? Let's try. Now the moment you say you want to execute them parallelly, this is what you do. By default, every execution has one thread. So even if you are not creating a thread by yourself, you do have one thread and that thread is known as a main thread. Okay, so this execution is done by a main thread. Okay, but I don't want to work with main thread. Of course we have that, but I want to print hello and hi, but then with the help of two different threads. How will I create two different threads? It's very easy actually. So there's one way to have features is hello has to be a subclass of thread. It's very easy, right? So if you simply make hello as subclass of thread class, your job is done. Same goes with high. Instead of normal class, we are making them thread because now they can run individually on different cores. Oh, but we are getting error. Now, when you want to use thread, you need to import a package, right? And that package is threading. So you have to say from threading, import star. So you're basically importing everything from threading package or threading module. And now you can see we got two threads. We got thread and we got thread. Now, once you have made them as thread, you will simply have to run them. It's so simple. Okay, before running this, what we're expecting is, so you can see the diagram here. So we have a main thread by default, right? And main thread will execute all the statements. The moment you say run and run here, it should create two different threads, which is let's say T1 and T2. And T1 will print hello five times and T2 will print hi five times. And it should be happening simultaneously, right? So it should get the output as hello, hi, hello, hi. But let's run this code and let's see what happens. Oh, that's weird. We are getting the same output. They're not running in parallel. What's wrong? See, the moment you say you want to create two different threads, this is not happening here. Even if you make your class as thread, we are not creating two different threads there. If you want to create a two different thread, instead of calling a run method, you need to call a start method. And that's weird, right? We are defining the method name as run, and then we are calling start. So behind the scene, what is happening is, when you say t1.start, internally it will call run. And the reason why we went for this method name as run is because inside thread class, we do have a method called run. So if you can see inside, I'm inside thread class now, and you can see we have a run method there. So it's an input method actually, and that's why we went for run. And if you're going for any other method, it will not work. So you have to make sure that instead of calling run, you have to say start so that it will execute two different threads. Now let's try. So let's run this code and let's see what happens. Oh, we are still getting the same output. We are getting the same output. What is happening is, yes, these two threads are running simultaneously. Let me prove my point. What I will do is show printing them five times to print them 500 times. Let's see what happens now. Let's run this code and you can see, oh, something happened here. If I go up, you can see that, you know, we have so many highs. I'm going up, okay? So you can see we have alternate high and hello. So you can see we got hello, hello, hello. And then suddenly we got three highs and then we got hello again. And then we got highs and then we got hello. So something is happening in parallel, right? But not exactly the way we wanted. We wanted to have one high and then one hello alternate case. So that means it is happening in parallel, but then your system is so fast. You know, this system is so fast that it is executing them at the same point, right? So there's a collision. Plus, uh, in your system, we have a concept of schedulers, which will give you a specific time to execute. 
and we are expecting it will print only one hello in that particular time but you know it is so smart it is executing 10 times in that gap it is printing 50 times in that gap so to increase the gap you know what i will do since it is going very fast i will make it sleep i will make it slow down the way you do that is by importing a package so you will use from time and you will import special method called a sleep so what you will do here is so after printing hello every time it prints hello i will say hey sleep for let's say one second so before printing the next execution go for a sleep of one second so now what will happen is when hello gets printed it will wait for one second and by the time you can print hi once uh, so it will go alternate now uh, let's see what what happens let's run this code and you can see it's going alternate way you can see that we are getting hello hi hello hi hello hi so it's working you know so both the functions or both the methods are running in parallel now this is what we wanted right so that's great it is working finally if i scroll up i hope everything is going good yeah it's going good so both the methods are running in parallel so we just we have two threads now you might be thinking why you have to put sleep there because normally when you create methods normally when in big application one method execution does take time okay we here we are just printing hello that's not what we do in the industry right so normally we make big methods and those methods will take some time to execute and that's why i'm putting sleep there because i'm assuming that we will be writing some big code to do that i will just run this code once more and let's see if it is going good just to recheck if everything is going good yeah, it's going good oh something went wrong can you see that something went wrong we are getting high hello now what is happening here now this is called as collisions maybe it is happening that two threads are coming at the same time to the cpu okay so because see we are assuming that they will run in parallel but suddenly they are going to the cpu at the same time after sleeping so once they wake up they are going to cpu at the same time what i do is so when we say start t1.start and t2.start i want to have a gap between them two so i will put a gap of let's say 0.2 seconds so let me put a gap of 0.2 seconds so that they will not go into collision and you can now you can see since there's a gap between these two they will not collide now hopefully and yeah it's working there's nothing wrong yeah it's working this is how you can you know unsync them because initially there was sync and that's why they were colliding but now they will not perfect okay this is how you do it right this is how you make it work so what is happening now is the moment you say t1 and t2 object you got two different threads but still they are into main thread okay so they are not separating the moment you say start it creates a new thread okay so in total we will be getting three threads after this so three threads the main thread t1 thread and t2 thread okay so let's say i want to print something here i want to print by now what do you think where you will print this by after printing all hi and hello it will print by in fact let me just reduce the number of hi hello here let me just go back to eight uh, because at least we can see what is happening so what do you think or uh, maybe will five is better right let's go for five so what do you think now will it print by at the end after hi hello or maybe somewhere in between let's run this code so take your time think about it pause the video think about it comment if you want and let's run this code oh can you see that we got by in between that's weird before printing hi and hello how can you print by the problem is who is responsible to execute this by is it t1 thread or t2 thread so who is responsible here is a main thread so after starting t1 and t2 so t1 is busy printing hello t2 is printing hi main is doing nothing right and that's why main says hey my job is done let me print by we don't want that we want to print by at the end so we have to ask main thread hey main thread wait wait for t1 and t2 to join uh how can you ask that so you have to say hey main thread let t1 join and t2 also join so please continue only after they are joining so when you say t1 dot join and t2 dot join at this point you are asking your main thread because all these statements will be executed by the main thread so at this point main thread will say okay you are asking me to wait for t1 i will do that so at this point main is waiting for t1 now once t1 comes back it was waiting for t2 once t1 t2 comes back it will print by let's verify you got hello hi hello hi hello hi at the end you will get by that's the power of join so that's the basic of threads okay so the advantage of threads is you can use multiple cores and you can execute things simultaneously in fact i will try to make one more complex example next time you know the concept is very important once you know the basics learning advanced will be easy so i hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comment section if you have any issue i will try to make one more video on thread uh, so that's it everyone so subscribe to the channel click on like button there and do share with your friends Bye bye